We want to spend a few minutes today talking about how to access your presets, how to control your camera in a remote location. And there is a free way to do it that you should totally be doing if you aren't already. So we already know that Google Chrome Remote is a WebRTC service that works pretty fast if you have a decent connection, okay? A decent internet connection on the remote site and on the production site, I guess like the home site and the remote site, right? If you've got good internet on both, you can pretty much run vMix over Chrome Remote. I've done it. I have also video edited over Chrome Remote. It works. I have also done many functions uh, this way. And so I'm a strong believer in the product as of today that it's suitable for doing this sort of thing. Well, what you can do is you can download um, Companion, okay, from BitFocus. So just go to Google, bitfocus.io, and download Companion, the latest version. And inside Companion, you can go and set up a Stream Deck emulator and then program a web page, essentially, to call all your presets. So let me show you how to do that and then we can uh, definitely check that out. So first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna cut over to this uh, desktop overlay. And to make this maybe a little bit simpler for all of us, let me, um, let me just change this real quick so that we can all participate in this. Uh, where are we here? Come on now. Da, 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 this one. Nope, not that one. Hold, please. This one. Okay, so uh, let's cut over here. Now, I, I realize that it's a little bit tricky to see the screen, uh, and I'll go to full screen in a few minutes when I need you to see details. But this is what, when you install, uh, when you install Companion, it will open like a little thing that looks like this, okay? And it'll say like, which network do you want to function on, especially if you have multiples? And so I want to pick my network that is the one network. That's my main home network here, okay? So it's my main network. I'm going to select uh, main bird dog one, and it, that's not going to change anything, but it will give me an IP address, which is my computer's IP address, 102. It will give me an IP address with a uh, basically like a web browser or a link that I can get to a web browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say launch GUI, all right, user interface, and when I launch that, it's going to launch this page right here. Now, it also launched it two places over here. But it's going to launch this page uh, that you see right here. So when we launch, the, there will be no connections when you launch. And we're going to add a connection. And we're going to add uh, whatever else is that we want to control. Now, in this instance, I have a P200. I also have a 110 that's off to my side. And so uh, we're definitely going to um, talk about that P200. When we add it, okay, we're going to say connection, add a connection. And in the latest version of Companion, we can actually add bird dog cameras natively. I'm sticking cool, eh? So we go here and say bird dog PTZ, and it will add this. We need to know the IP address of the camera, okay? So this is 77.77. .77, so I put that in here, 192.168.77.77. .77. And then uh, we can say auto detect bird dog model, or we can say I know exactly what it is. It's a P200. A2, A3, and we can say save, and look, it adds that camera here. Now, I can change the label, and I want to do that, P200-2, because this is the second connection I want to use, okay? So I'm going to save this, and look, it gives me the status that it is green. We're good to go. Green check is always good. We can also turn manually turn these connections on and off inside of Companion itself. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go to Surfaces, and I want to say add emulator. When you click on this, it's going to add a line to your emulator list, okay? Uh, and let's see here which ones. Okay, so it will click it. Now, I already have an emulator here because I use it occasionally. But I've clicked add emulator. And look, it makes this little ID that says emulator, okay? So it'll make a line item say emulator. Now, I also have an X keys in here that I use to control all of my stuff. And so when I'm using X keys, I'm using it right now to switch between these two scenes. Uh, this is where I program my X keys inside Companion, and it works fantastic. And it even manipulates the feedback light. So yes, yes, yes. It's such a great little tool. I love Companion. You need to check it out if you don't know anything about it yet. It's great. Okay, so 
we're going to add the emulator here on the surface. Now what we want to do is click up here on buttons, okay? And that's going to take us to this screen. Now, this screen is showing my, uh, essentially my X keys layout, all right? So this is the, the X keys itself and how it is that I'm, how I have it all programmed. But we can actually change pages here and program different pages if we want. And so we can uh, add buttons. We could just run this normal. Like if I wanted all my X keys buttons, for example, available on the emulator, I could do that. But we're going to actually go back to page 99. What I am going to do, just for uh, purposes here, is I'm going to add... I'm going to create a button and just say page down. And then uh, on the next page, so if I click this, it should go down to 99. And then here I'm going to say page up just so I don't get locked out. Okay. What we can do now is we can view this emulator on the computer. And so if you can remote into your production studio and you're in some remote site and you still need to run Sunday's show... You can, or whichever day, you can you can actually just pull up Emulator on a web UI and pull up vMix and split the screen or do a two-thirds, one-third split screen or whatever you'd like to do to run the emulator. So I can like program these buttons now, right? So look, when I've added that connection for the P200, I'm going to click over here on this here, presets, and it's going to give me all my connections. So I have a vMix connection, my original P200 connection, but today I've added that P200 underscore 2. I'm going to click on that, and it gives me all of the programmed options that I can pull onto those buttons and set up my stream deck as I want to. Now, it can also manipulate the X keys, right? So if you want it to be connected to X keys, you can do that. But in this instance, I'm going to program page 99 and we are going to uh, put some preset recalls in there. So we're going to go over here to the, to the right-hand side. And with my PTZ P200, second connection, but P200, I'm going to say the button presets. And here we can say preset recall 1, preset recall 2, you know, 3, and 4. What I can also do, though, is I can mix and match. And so if I wanted to, for example, have some control and be able to move the camera around, well, we have some broad general controls that we can use. And so maybe I want to set up kind of like a, an easy left, right, up, down. But then I want to have a home position re recorded, right? And well, that's preset one is generally everyone's home position. So I can put that here on the list as well. So now I have a way to touch the, touch the screen and control the camera. Now, does it work? That's the next question, right? Well, we can actually click on the button and send a test and say, does it work? Well, we can test the command and lo and behold, now it works. Now, if I hit preset recall, is it going to jack up my colors? We'll find out here in a second, I guess. If we recall the position, yoink, hey, oh, it's pretty close. So we can uh, test the buttons before we use them and then get them into position and uh, start testing and calling those things. But now I want to actually use it, right? So I want to see this thing actually, whoops, sorry, everybody. I'm adjusting my, <laughs> I'm adjusting my camera and it does not like a studio monitor for some reason. Whoa, that's weird. Um, doing this in studio monitor and it's sending like those commands way too far, way too far. All right. So let's call this again, test. And hopefully we will go back to our home position here. Okay, there we go. So let's live with this for now, and I'll just slouch a little bit. So we can call each of our presets. Now, the question is then, when I remote in, how do I pull this up? Well, what we can do is you would start from scratch, right? So we're going to pull up, and you'd open Companion, and you're going to get this little screen, right? And we're going to say, launch the UI. And it will take your default router and launch the actual web UI. Then we're going to say we want to go to Surfaces, right? And I'm sorry, and then we go over here to the left-hand side next to the, all of those buttons and say Emulator. It will take us to a screen, and that white box is actually a button. And so we can say Emulator. And now I have all of my buttons that were available on Stream Deck. And so if I click down, look, it takes me to that page that I had just programmed. So now I can click on these buttons, and they should work in real time if I hold it down. Yoink. 
Yoink. Hello. So I can actually I can actually manually do this. Now remember, there are actually um, speed controls as well that are useful when it comes to actually, sorry, actually I have to like click it. There are speed controls that we can also put on this screen. So we go back to companion, we go back to buttons, and maybe we want to change, we're going to go down to page 99 where all this is, and we're going to say P200, we're going to say camera control, and then I'm going to say, uh, let's see, what button is this? These are actual, da -da 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 -da, pan speed, tilt speed, zoom speed. These are all ups. Now, uh, for your reference, preset speed. Are these both presets? Let's take a look. Yep, preset speeds. So if I go back to my emulator, here I can show you this full screen so you can follow along. If I go back to my emulator, now, if I lower this, oh, that's so stinking cool. Uh, we can lower the speed on the presets. And so now if I call a preset, well, let's move me out of position real quick and send that move command. Then if I recall this preset, yes, it is a fair bit slower. So this is preset speed. Now I want to change my movement speed so cam control my pan speed is going to be here which is this one my tilt speed is going to be here which is this one which pan speed is the one we're going to manipulate first and then my zoom speed um is going to be over here why not so zoom speed seven all right so now we head back to the emulator and look all my buttons are now uh, programmed and I can say uh, preset speeds down. I would like to change the pan speeds to go down. So we can just move these down so that it's not at full speed because when you press the buttons manually, and again, you're probably going to be calling presets when you are running this remotely because watching all of this in real time, it would be better if you had a joystick, but you can't. So now if we press over, it's much slower than before. Much slower than before, okay? Really useful stuff. That's that's even u like usable, to be honest with you, okay? So it's a whole lot slower, and you can kind of get it into position, but then I really like this preset recall button, and I can get me back in my home position. So ideally, if I were th thinking about a workflow option, I would probably decide that I wanted to set all my presets up before I left for my vacation or my remote you know, visit. And then if I have presets one, two, three, and four, I can just program them here on the emulator, pull it up on the web UI, and now I have full control of my stream deck that I had before. And I can call all those buttons if I need to, and I would camp out in the preset recall. Ideally, I would have one wide shot as an establishing shot, and I'd use the PTZs to kind of have home positions on key places inside the auditorium that I was filming in. So that's, that is how I would think that through. And you can do this all with Companion BitFocus. They do require your email address to be shared, but it is a free download, and you do not have to have a Stream Deck to get this to work. Matter of fact, my Stream Deck is not even it isn't even connected to Companion. My Stream Deck is connected to the Stream Deck software for sound effects uh, reasons. <laughs> I need is that. And I use my X keys, which is connected to Companion, and then I use the emulator for everything else. So pretty stinking cool, and it's a great little way to maximize free resources, and Companion is a great app. Now, sidebar, Bird Dog did not design the plugin for Companion. It's all done by third party, and so if you are experiencing issues with it connecting or your stuff not working correctly, you have to reach out to the Reddit forums where this is all hosted or to the support department at uh, BitFocus to ask that question because we don't have anything to do with it. They just took our API commands and integrated them into the buttons. So that's it. I hope this is helpful. It's a free resource. It's really great. I love Companion. I use it every time I go live. And uh, hopefully you uh, will find a good use for it too. So uh, we'll see you in the next one.